What's going on everybody? Happy Monday to you. Normally not my favorite day of the week, but you know, today it's beautiful outside. I'm talking beautiful. It is a little on the hot side for me. I am not much for the heat. Um, give me about 70, 75 degrees, uh, and I am happy, but much more than that, and I start to suffer a little bit, and we're way above that right now, so, um, but that being said, it is gorgeous today, man, thank God for this beautiful, beautiful day, um, that being said, I just wanted to jump in here real quick, I found a new program that I found really cool for Void Linux, um, Basically, on my void system and on most people's void systems, they have a couple different ways of installing things. You know, you can obviously use GitHub and install things uh, with source, <clears throat> um, with uh, the um, source code and everything like that. Um, that's one way. You have the main package manager, which if we open a terminal and we uh, clear the screen, let's zoom in a little. Um, I can do it with the main repo, which is basically doing sudo, maybe. Su so su boy, I really cannot type today. Su to xbps dash install um, and then dash s name of program. So I apologize for that jumbled mess of me typing to get this simple, stupid command in the terminal. But anyway, you can use the main um, installation process, which is through the main repository for Void Linux, by using sudo xbps dash install dash s name of program. That's going to get your program installed if, as long as it's in the main repository. Um, uh, for the X binary, X binary packaging system. Um, if you don't use that, you also have the void source packages, which is a GitHub um, pack. Or it's a um, a group of packages on the Git on GitHub that you can download onto your system and install that way. And to do that, I have a script created. I've had several videos on it. Um, if I do mod shift I, um, it'll launch my void source packages, um, and this basically lists all the packages you can install via the void source packages. Um, and basically right now, outside of installing from source or building from source using the source packages and using XBPS install using the main repo, this is the way I've installed stuff on my void system. But I'm still missing things. There's still things out there that I just haven't been able to get on void. Even trying to build from source, some of them um, just didn't seem to work. But these programs um, work well on other distributions um, like Debian or Arch. Well, I'm gonna show you today if you're not familiar with it, a tool that allows you to install .deb packages, which are Debian packages, that allows you to install .deb packages. And what it does is it converts them from .deb into a format that XBPS will be able to install and you'll be able to use it on your system. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, I'm going to clear the screen here. Maybe. I don't want to... I don't want to update right now, so let's clear the screen. Um, and I'm going to jump over here to GitHub. Now, if you go to GitHub and you go to Tolusher, I don't know how you even say that, um, so I butchered that name, I know for a fact, but it's T-O-L-U-S-C-H-R, and the package or the program is called xdeb, and it is pretty freaking cool. Basically, what it does is, like I said, it converts .deb packages into XBPS packages. And it's written in POSIX compliant shell. I mean, this is the coolest thing I've come across in a long time. So let's go ahead and check it out and show you how it works. Now, what you want to do, you don't have to, but what you're going to want to do, and I say this because when you'll see when we actually make a package here, um, it's it's going to create kind of a mess. Um, so what you're going to want to do is wherever you want to install these or download these um, .deb packages, you want to make a separate directory for each um, program you are going to install. So basically, I'm going to put mine. If I'm going to, I'm going to z into my dot local, um, and we're going to do programs. And this is where I'm going to put mine, and then I'm going to install today Mailspring email client. Now, this is my favorite email client. Right now, I use. Um, you know, it's not going to let me log into it right now, but um, right now I use Neomut, and uh, Neomut is great, don't get me wrong, I love Neomut, but um, I prefer to use Mailspring, and I use Mailspring on my um, Arch installs and everything, but for some reason it's not in the repos for XBPS, or for Void, and when I tried to use the Flatpak um, that is uh, available for it, it wouldn't work. It just it kept throwing errors for me. So 
I found this, which is just a really cool way to um, be able to do this. So we are going to install MailSpring. So what we're gonna do is I am going to create a directory in here in my .local programs called MailSpring. Actually, what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna keep them all in their own directory as well. So we're working with .deb packages. So let's just call them, uh, no, no, not Debs. Let's do, let's have a little fun with this. Let's do Debbie Gibsons. <laughs> let's uh, give a little, a little uh, nod of the hat to the 80s. Who, 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 who likes the 80s? Everybody loves the 80s. So this is gonna be our Deb packages. We're gonna be a Debbie Gibsons. So we're gonna CD into Debbie Gibsons. So these are our Debbie Gibson packages, and we are going to make a directory for MailSpring. And then we're gonna CD into MailSpring. So now we are in home jake.local programs Debbie Gibson's MailSpring. So let's go ahead and clear the screen there. And what we're gonna do now is, well, first things first, is we're going to download this MailSpring uh, Deb package right here. So we go to MailSpring, we're gonna download the .deb package. I'll take a second here. And we are going to go ahead and put it in home uh, .local programs. Sorry, let's take a second. Debbie Gibson's MailSpring, and we're going to save it there. So let's get that downloaded and saved. Hopefully this doesn't take too terribly long. Um, should just take a second here to download those. But then let's go back over to here. And you can use the git clone up here. But I've kind of been doing a little research and heard a few things about the fact that if you use that, then there's some issues that happen. So what we want to do is we want to go over here to the releases and we want to go to the fourth release and we're going to click on that and then we're going to come down here to the xdeb we're going to click on the xdeb excuse me and we'll just download that right into the same directory for now so we've downloaded that if we go back to the main page here it shows if you want to install xdeb you're going to copy that script that we just downloaded and you're going to put it into your user local bin that's all you got to do is download that, put it into use, user usr slash local slash bit. So we've got both of them downloaded. So we're going to go over here and we're going to do an ls and you can see we've got our dot dev package here and we've got xdeb right here. Well first things first what we need to do is we need to do chmod plus x on that xdeb package. So let's do that and if we do an ll now we can see we have execution uh, or execute privileges on that xdeb script. Now what we need to do is we need to sudo mv and we want to put xdeb and we're going to move that to slash user slash local slash bin and we're going to hit enter and then we're going to enter our super secret password and now if we do an ls we see it's not there anymore. So now if we go back to the uh, uh, github page for this project you can see we've installed it now. Um, all we have to do is now we've made that uh, we've made that executable. Um, now all we have to do is convert the package, and the way we convert the package is we just run that xdeb command, and then we give it a couple flags uh, dash s dash d or dash s d e, and then we put in the file that we want to uh, or the package that we want to convert. Um, if you come down here, you can look and you can see the different flags we're using. The uh, dash s is going to be sync runtime dependency file. Um, the dash D is going to do automatic dependencies, and the E is going to uh, remove empty directories. So basically, these flags, um, there's more flags you can do down here, so if you just go to their GitHub page and look through here, it gives you a little bit more instruction. Um, but basically, we're just going to run those three flags. So if we go back over here, let's clear the screen again, and we're going to do an ls. You can see we've just got that mailspring uh, .deb package right there. So we're going to do xdeb. And then we're going to do that on the mail spring, but we need to put the flags in. So we're going to do xdeb dash capital S and then lowercase de. And we're going to put that on those. First things first, real quick though, I'm going to show you that if I run a, let's uh, actually, let's open up my D menu here, or not D menu, but my program launcher, and we're going to do mail spring. You can see it's not installed anywhere. Um, we are going to open another terminal here real quick, and we'll do a sudo xbps install 
and we'll do dash s mail spring and it's gonna look for a second and I'm just doing this to show you that uh, mail spring is package mail spring not found in repository pool now I would try and show you on the VSP on my VSP script um, and I'll do it anyway um, but if I do this and do mail Oh, I took it out already. Okay, I did have a, I tried to make a template or tried to borrow a template to build Mailspring uh, in a void source package uh, when I was first learning how to do this and it failed miserably. So you can see I don't have a template for it on the void source packages either. So you can see there's no way really for me to launch Mailspring without running this. Um, I can't install it via XBPS. It's not installed on my system already. Um, and I have, all I have is this Mailspring.deb package. So we're gonna run that xdeb dash capital S D E and then we're gonna run it on that mailspring dot dev package we're gonna hit enter and it's gonna sync the SH libs and it's gonna go through a process here now I'm not quite sure how long this one's gonna take um, the ones I've tried it on before um, on my test laptop didn't take too long um, so hopefully this will this will be the same so it's running through its process um, it's getting everything all set up and uh, now this is kind of a game changer for me. If I can do this and get some .dev packages of stuff that I wanted that haven't been available on uh, Void Linux that I've been able to find and get working and I can do them through this, this is going to just be amazing for me. So now it shows it's done. It has now converted that into a package that um, uh, Void and XBPS understands. So right at the end here, you can see it says done. Install using XBPS dash install dash capital R bind packages and then mailspring so let's go ahead and do sudo xbps dash install dash r bind pkgs mail mailspring um, I don't want to go to underscore three so or uh, ten dot excuse me dot three underscore one there okay sorry about that so now um, you can see right here, install using XBPS, install R, bind packages, mailspring. So we type in that command here, sudo XBPS, dash install, dash R, bind packages, mailspring, and then we hit enter. And it asks if we want to continue. We say yes. Um, and that is it. It shows one successfully installed. So now let's go ahead and see if, oh, look at that. I now have mailspring in my program list. What happens if we enter? Do we get it to launch? If this doesn't work, this whole video was well. <laughs> oh, look at that. So we now have, I'm not going to go through and set this up because I have to install my passwords and then you guys will see my emails and all that stuff. So yada, yada, yada. But anyway, you can see now that with this XDEV uh, program, you can now find and use some of those programs that were only available on Debian that were in de .deb packages that weren't available for you on Void. Um, you can go through now and you can convert those to packages that Void will read and you can install and you can use. So this is a really cool tool. This is kind of a game changer for things because um, you know, as much as I love Void, there's been a few little hiccups. Not not ones that have made me want to change away from it, but there have been a few little hiccups that it's like, man, I really wish that was on there. Um, and I'm looking at making um, Void Source Package templates for it. Um, but if I can just go about this way and get them via de dev packages, um, that's just going to be amazing. Um, so that being said, I hope you found this useful. If you're a Void user, I don't see how you could not find it useful. Um, but I really hope you found this useful and you can uh, get a little bit of use out of it. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and God bless.